TitleMatchNetwork.com. You know, I'm trying to I'm trying to remember exactly what. Oh, I know exactly what it was, and and it was something I was just talking about. It was the contracts. Okay, here here are these guys, you know, making half a million dollars a year, and I was like one of the last guys, you know, on the page that that they were going to talk to, and it was Jim Hurd, you know, who was who was the head of the company, and uh, you know, they just they just weren't talking to me, you know, about money. And I knew that I wasn't making, you know, what all these other guys around me were, you know, and I was working with these top guys and I was the one, you know, that was kind of leading them around on a leash, you know, because some of them didn't have, you know, the true ability, you know, to have a match on their own. You know, if you put two, I'm not going to name any names because, you know, some of these guys are, are the most over guys in the business. But if you put two of them together, you know, they just I don't think that they could have matches. Well, the money issue was there. And Vince, uh, Pat Patterson lived in uh, in uh, on Treasure Island over near Tampa. And. Uh, I had talked to Pat. And Pat said, you know, you can come back anytime you want. He said, Vince is, you know, forgotten and forgiven, which he never forgets. I'll say it again. <laughs> <laughs> but not being offered a contract and being the last guy in line, you know, I was making I was making decent money, but I wasn't making what I knew these other guys were making. You know, when I knew they were getting, you know, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, you know, every two weeks. Right. You know, and and my checks weren't that, you know, I thought, okay, you know, I got to do something. So I called Vince myself. I gave my notice to, to Jim Hurd. I told him, I said, I said, you won't even talk to me. You know, I, I don't know if you don't like me or what it is. And Jim Hurd was, he's a rough guy to deal with. You know, he was hard to deal with. And uh, that was early. That was early 89. Because I, I, you know, I was with the company and then through the purchase by Turner, that was, that was early in 89. Uh, I think I just went home and when I, when I went home, I called Vince and he said, uh, he said, I got a spot for you. And he said, uh, we'll come up here and we'll figure out something. And I mean, it, I was the same character, you know, that, that I always was, you know, but I, I put my hair in a ponytail and, you know, and I slicked it back. And I was the one that came up with, you know, the name, the Widowmaker. I said, Vince, what do you think about this? I said, the Widowmaker is, is a famous rodeo bull. And I said, what he's done is he's gored, you know, like six or seven cowboys, you know, almost to death. And, you know, he's, he's killed a couple of guys, you know, this famous rodeo bull, the Widowmaker. And actually, they had to retire the bull because nobody wanted to ride him when they drew him. So he said, let me think about it. So, I, you know, I told him, you know, OK, I went back to the house and, and uh, he gave me a call. And he said, you know what? I think it'll work. I think we can do something with it. So I had, you know, I had my boots made up with, you know, the black with the Widowmaker on them. And, and uh, I think then that was probably when I was I was the biggest and biggest and in best condition, you know, of my life so far. I was I was 325 pounds, and you know, and I I, I was doing uh, I was doing uh, behind the neck presses, you know, with three 305. You know, I was I was big and I was strong, and that's what Vince wanted. That's what Vince liked. But uh, the Widowmaker thing, the reason it was short lived. And, and, and this is really something, you know, that, you know, it's, it's, it's really kind of personal in my family, but, you know, it's common knowledge. Anybody can find out. But my dad and my brother got into some trouble. So I told Vince, I said, Vince, I said, uh, I think, you know, that I'm going to be in one way or another, you know, associated, you know, with what's happened with these guys. And I said, I think it'd be better, you know, if I'm at home instead of, you know, the 
FBI or the D, not not the DEA. Well, it wasn't the DEA. It was the Secret Service or whatever. Anyway, I said it'd be better. You know, you don't want the publicity. Right. You know, if something comes to where there's somehow they think they can tie me in to what's happened. Hey, my dad, and my brother, they just made a big mistake. They are in the wrong place at the wrong time and trusted the wrong people. And they just, they did something wrong, but I wasn't part of it. But I mean, the, the, uh, the people with the, uh, secret service really, really thought, you know, that I had something to do with this. So I went home. This is and, the counterfeiting. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now I'll, I'll let you say it, you know, but that's what it was. So the guys, you know, that they worked it out, you know, to where they, you know, they, they got there, you know, they got a, a minimum sentence, I think. And, and, uh, you know, it was hard and it's, it was hard for them and it was hard for, hard for the whole family, you know, but I just figured it would be best just to, just to be, you know, be right. out of the limelight, you know, instead of being under investigation, you know, for, you know, I, I'll say it, you know, I, I had nothing to do with it, but, but these, these people believe that I did, you know, so. I mean, I had everybody on me. The IRS is calling me, you know, the the Secret Service, the Sheriff's Department is parked across the street from my house, you know. It's like there's a, it was like I, I was under house arrest. Right. You know, so I, I just thought, okay, man, I got to figure out something I'm going to do. Because, I mean, they, they call the grand jury and, uh, you know, they, they couldn't, they couldn't indict me, you know, because I hadn't done anything. So I lived, you know, like it, like in the shadow of this thing that happened, you know, for the, for the, it probably lasted about four years, you know, the shadow of that thing. And, and it's still, you know, you know, my dad, my brother still su suffer from, you know, because it's a, it's, you know, it's a felony and, uh, but it's, uh, you know, I got through it and they got through it and, you know, it, it's just, uh, you know, it's not spoken of, you know, in, in the family. Right. Uh, so, you know, that's something that, you know, I kind of shared here, you know, that I really, I really didn't want to, but, you know, but I wasn't I, even asking about it. no, it's, it's okay. It's okay. You know, because, you know, Hey, we're telling it like it is. So I left there, I left Vince and, uh, I decided, uh, I called Vince. I thought, okay, I know what I can do. I can work in Japan, you know, and I can do these things. So I started going back to all Japan and Baba liked me right? because he had liked me from, uh, you know, the, the early eighties when I'd gone over. So he said, uh, you know, Baba could, could speak perfect English. You know, a lot of the guys, he, you know, he wouldn't even speak to, you know, right. like he couldn't speak English. <laughs> yeah. But he told me, he said, you know, you have a job here if you want it. Title match